Hello everybody and welcome to this week's update video. Uh, my name is Martin. I'm an Inkscape developer developing features and fixes for everyday Inkscape users. Thank you for joining me for yet another update. Uh, this week I have some really in interesting sort of feature um, sort of refactoring going on. So as you know, we're running up to the end of the beta. Um, so we also got some fixes. So, but first of all, as always, I want to give a big shout out and a big thank you to all of my sponsors. Um, this week's Ride the Gnu sponsor is Dolum LLC. Uh, thank you very much for your help and support. And uh, th thank you to all of my other pay Patreon and Libra Pay supporters. I really wouldn't be able to do, do this work without your help. Okay, so what do we have for this week? First of all, let's get the, the bug fixes out of the way for 1.2. 1, 1 um, it's been quiet, honestly. I fixed a crash in the pages tool. Um, I introduced a crash in a previous fix and this week I fixed it. Um, but that's it. that's pretty much it. Like I didn't actually see a lot of bug fi fixes. Um, so I started some work on some feature stuff. Now this particular feature has been um, niggling at my brain for a while now. And it's because internally inside of Inkscape, the way that we handle uh, templates page sizes and uh, information about like presets of pages is all over the place. Um, there are basically four big locations for where file information is kept. Uh, one is there's a skeleton which produces a pages.csv which is a list of of uh, page sizes that appear in like the um, uh, document properties. There's a set of extensions, which are they're effect extensions, right? Just just like the effects menu, but they have their effects switch off, switched off, and they they pretend to be uh, templates. Um, then there's a directory full of CSV files, uh, not CSV files, SVG files called templates. Any files that you put in there will become available as templates. And then finally, there's the there's the hacky mess that I added, which was the welcome screen. Welcome screen to get it finished. We put all of the templates, I would say we, I'm not deferring responsibility. I, I did this. I put the, all of the, the, the file formats that we wanted to have in, in the welcome screen. I put it in the user interface definition itself. So if you wanted to add something to that list, you'd literally have to edit the user interface in order to do it. Uh, all of this is bad. So uh, what I've been spending this week doing is uh, I had to do a design plan for like what I wanted to do internally inside of Inkscape to clean this mess up. And the solution that I've come to is I made um, everything an extension. So essentially like putting everything down to being an extension. I've made a template extension an actual thing. So no more effect extension. Um, it has two operations. One is it can generate a new document, right? So a sized document or even think like a predefined, pre-calculated uh, document with a bunch of options, or it can resize an existing page. Those are two separate operations. So like if you select the page and then you resize it, um, the vast, vast majority of all of the sizes and things that you'll see in Inkscape will be internal extensions. So they won't be calling out to Python or anything. It's just internally, it will have these fun functions as well, but we're making them available to Python developers if they want to develop their own sizes or their own calculations and stuff. There's a lot more thinking about what it means to be uh, a piece of pa paper with landscape or portrait orientation. Uh, making sure that icons and descriptions and labels and uh, all of those things are first class pieces of metadata. So no longer will the will Inkscape have to like um, pr pretend that like, oh, I'm getting this data over here, but it's actually all just hard baked. This means that anybody who writes an extension, a template extension, will be able to set an icon, will be able to show it in, in the welcome screen. And uh, finally, there is the removal and replacement of the templates uh, so that the, the uh, new from te templates, or as I like to call it, the NFT generator, is the, uh, <laughs> essentially it's, a, it's an older interface, which many people have asked why we couldn't just replace it with the welcome screen, because it's much, much nicer. And of course, the problem is, is that the welcome screen's uh, presets were all baked into the user interface. So if I did that, you like you wouldn't be able to access any of your templates 
at all. So that just didn't work. So um, this week I, I, I created this new temp template for format for extensions. I ripped out the welcome screen completely, like redid the, the whole way in which this the, that widget works. Um, reformatted all of the presets from pages.csv uh, with with help from James, so James the the intern actually did a lot of the type typing. I, I feel bad giving him clerical work, but it, it really was just form for formatting stuff. Created some re really neat Python scripts to, to be able to do that too. Um, and so I've got it to the point where it's it's reproducing most of the fun functionality now. There are still some things to clean up. Oh, and I should say. Uh, this is not going to be in 1.2, right? This is a future feature, something that is not only going to be in 1.3, but it, it's going to spend a year being te tested and thought about and maybe, you know, re redesigned as time, time goes on. Um, but you can still te test it because it will be in the developer release when it's finished, when, I, when I've merged it, at least. Um, I'm probably going to want to spend another week working on it because I want to polish like just exactly how the Python stuff works to make sure that that's fun functioning correctly. And I do want to make sure that the resize to page stuff works because I think I'm going to have to have a, a like a real brainstorm about how, how that all fits together. But in all, it's a removal of a whole bunch of code. It's the cleanup of a whole bunch of interfaces. It's the removal of um, assumptions and the uh, invitation for other contributors to contribute page sizes and page tem templates and so, so on directly into in Inkscape. Um, so that's what I've got up to. Uh, now let's talk about some of the other stuff that happened in Inkscape that I didn't do. Um, the hero of this week has got to be Nathan Lee. Not only has he been doing all of the, the bug report stuff, but it's, it's, I, I see like eight merge requests of, of different bug fi fixes that he's got in this week. Um, ODG export, font editor, quick list menus, drag and drop, memory leaks, uh, tab shortcuts, widescreen views just like hitting bugs where he's figured out like what the fix is. Um, also of note is PBS, who has committed his OpenGL can canvas. This is a very exciting but highly experimental graphics cards based rent renderer that should allow Inkscape to have a much faster rent rendering time. Um, he also spent a lot of time fixing memory leaks. So lots of little memory leak commits. Um, but otherwise, it's been pretty quiet. I think most developers are actually just waiting for the release to happen so that they can kind of get into the into their stride and they don't want to trip things up. Uh, me, I'm I'm just going in full full force with the, <laughs> the work I want to do. Um, but let me know if if you're trying the beta, if you're excited for the release, and um, yeah, also let me know if you um, want to tell me what to do, tell me what like a particular fix that you need. Let us know, and uh, I'll I'll see you all next week.